Welcome back, Jeff Cameron Show, 93.3 Real Talk Radio, War Chant TV. You see the man on the screen right there. He is the head baseball coach at Florida State. He's Link Jarrett. Coach, first of all, good afternoon. Great to talk to you as always. Secondly, let's just start with you're 27 and 5. A lot of baseball to play. Coaches always look to the next. I get it. But if I had told you before the season that this thing was going to turn around to the tune of 27 and 5 at this juncture of the season after completing a three-game sleep over Florida for the season. Would you have thought that that was possible? Because you might have. I don't know. Jeff, there were moments in the fall and the preseason where I saw on the field as good of college baseball as I've ever seen. I, I really did. Then I saw sloppy stuff that concerned me, and I still see a combination of that. But the delivery and the response from the players, like – you face adversity in numerous ways in this thing. You face positive experiences that you have to respond to. I thought last night's game, the environment, the fans, the marching chiefs, the energy, and the response and the delivery by our guys was as good as I've seen. So whatever the record is, it is. I have seen flashes from the moment we started preseason work and even in the fall up until last night of the college game being played at a very, very high level. I don't really care about the records. I want the guys to perform every day and be the best versions of themselves. That's what this game demands, and it's relentless. Like, if you looked at – we got back at 2.30 in the morning, Monday morning. By the time these guys got to their apartments, it was probably 3 o'clock to think of when they went to bed and had academics and stuff to – to reboot Tuesday and deliver, it's just a great response, and it was fun to watch it. For some people, last night's game might be the only game they get to come to. There were people <laughs> climbing up the wall, hanging on the screen in right field to get a look at this. There were students, I was told, wrapped around the parking lot that yeah. just couldn't get in. To deliver the product for the people that came to this, it was really a cool moment to have the marching chiefs, David Platt, to line that up, which started as, can you play the anthem? He's like, coach, we got way more than anthem for you. They <laughs> practice in our concourses every time there's lightning in the fall. And I let them, you can practice anywhere you want. Like yeah. come up there. So it's pretty cool. And um, just the, the matching of the on-field product to what the fans and the marching chiefs and the energy brought to the table I coached in the biggest on-campus super regional in the history of the sport, Starkville a couple years ago. And then the Knoxville thing in 22 was the biggest one-game viewing in the history of super regional baseball. Right. But the last night was better. Like the atmosphere was better last night here, and the delivery of the product by the players was as good as I've seen, man. Coach, I, I want to echo this for a second because I love the way you laid it out. I was covering football yesterday. I was down covering on the field. I was in the indoor practice facility. I came out and watched them do 11 on 11s. And then my next step was to – so, so I was in Hauser. And the reason I bring that up is I got to watch it build. I got to watch slowly how it built. All the things you're describing about it, fans begin to trickle in. There's a buzz in the air. There's a sense that something special could happen here tonight, a feeling that – this was going to be a unique baseball atmosphere. I've been going to games since you played at Hauser and before. And I think you're right. You don't need me to confirm it, but I think that's the most unique atmosphere at Hauser I've ever seen. I can only imagine what it was like to coach and be and play in, but watching it, I, I walked all around the stadium. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. It's the best I've seen. And the, <laughs> the focus, like the guys matching what was going on externally and locking in. I've never seen them play with that kind of poise and focus and calmness. Like in what was a raucous, really neat environment, they went the other way. Like they calmed and focused. It was really special. Like it's been a long time. You know, I came in here a couple of years ago as an opposing coach, but I was trying to reflect back on my time playing. And then when I coached here for the one season way back, I don't know that I had felt it like that before. Maybe I missed it. 
but that was that was top of the chart for me, man. So that's the largest margin of victory ever for FSU over Florida. You go back a long ways. I, I know it's a singular game and series, and you want to show respect to your opponent, but you're a knoll. That had to feel really good. I, I know you don't worry about the record, and you want the guys to be their best, but that that's pretty cool what just happened last night in terms of the lopsidedness and the dominance that displayed by your team against a rival. No, Jeff, it was great. Um, before we went out on the field, we always do our scouting report meeting and we talk about some of the details of leading into these games. And we knew we had won the series. Okay, so that's behind us. Every time you step on the field, you get a chance to do something special. Every time, like you don't know what this game may present for you. There's an opportunity to do something unique and something special every time you step out there. Clearly, going into last night and just approaching that game as this one game, win or take all, the energy, you could feel it pulsating like even before we went out to take pregame infield outfield. I said, you're going to have to go out there and respond and answer in this and make this night a really special moment for you. The game presents these. Clearly, this is a unique one because you get to do something to your rival that's very difficult to do. Like, they're tough to beat. Yeah, They're tough to beat twice. I don't care how you spread the games out. It's tough to do it three times in a row. And watching them, man, focus and engage. I think we were four or five pitches in, and there's two home runs and we're down. These guys didn't bat an eye. And Abraham didn't really bat an eye. He went right back out and continued to throw some blows. Just a remarkable in-house moment. It really was. Yeah, I was just about to – I was going to ask you. I'm glad you answered it for me in advance. I, I wondered what it was like because, obviously, everybody settles in. The atmosphere is awesome. The anthem is incredible. Boom, boom, back-to-back -back home runs. And you're going, whoo, okay, Florida's a little ticked off. Let's see what happens here. But you just told me nothing changed in that dugout. No, it didn't. And it didn't really change the, – the, the enthusiasm after some of the home runs. Like, you could see it building. But it didn't get away from them. You know, sometimes when I say response, people always think it's you're responding to adversity. Sometimes you you can't back down because things are going well. So your response to really good moments in games is as important to your response to the negative stuff that happens. Mm -hmm. Like you've got to manage both and stay the course. And when I say best version of yourself, that's exactly what you're trying to do. But it's got to be every at-bat and every pitch and every defensive play to have the product on the field maximize itself and, and be an elite-level performance. Suffice to say, you got the response you were looking for after a couple of midweek games that I don't think you were entirely pleased with certain approaches at the plate. Uh, going back a little bit before the BC series, you kind of commented and, you know, a little frustrated, but maybe a lack of focus or concentration – and so this sounds like the antithesis of that. These were guys that were focused every at bat, no matter the situation, no matter the score. It was, Jeff. It was. Um, from the first pitch to the last. I know that the, the at bats in the last inning, we're trying to get some of these guys into that environment. And um, there's a few at bats that I know they would want over. But all in all, completely locked in. But the fans and the crowd and the Chiefs and everything and the grill and the smoke on the field and the light show, that kind of locks you in. You know, <laughs> it, it, it sure helps. Yeah. But they weren't overwhelmed by it. You know, I think there are some situations where players can be overwhelmed. And that moment, is that stage too big? Was that too much? Um, it wasn't. And again, it was one game. But it was an explosive, really good game. And now you have to go do it like tomorrow night's one game. Like, how do we answer tomorrow night? Our sport and the relentless nature of it being in your face so often. And our staff right now, like yesterday and today, we're dealing with some really serious recruiting things that we have to tend to right now as we look towards the draft and the upcoming stuff. It So for us as coaches, it's – punching you in the face all the time and the players have to answer and we have to answer as coaches. So that's 
our sport may not be as physically grueling and grinding and like the physical hand to hand stuff that some of the other sports, but it's the, it's the relentless. You have to answer and you have to be on point 70 times in a short period of time. It's not easy. I'm going to ask you two more questions. One of them is about the series against Miami. As you said, you got to quickly turn around against another arch rival. who's going to come in here hungry to win because they've had a struggle as of late. So it's a short window, but I I've always wondered this and you can answer it. I'm sure. When did the Florida State Florida series, which used to be, I remember doing a game. I was a color analyst with Lee Bowen when Florida State played on the road against Florida, uh, and Brett Groves hit a grand slam. I was thinking back on that. That series used to be two and two. It was the best because it was almost like you had ones versus ones, twos versus twos, threes versus threes in the rotation. And now it's just this entirety one, one, one thing, which, it, listen, it is what it is. But I hate it. <laughs> I really wish it'd go back to what it was. When did that change and why? Do you think I know? I don't, <laughs> man, I don't know. I, I don't I don't have you any idea. You know what I'm saying? You remember the way it used to be, right? I mean, that was that was fun. It used to be Tallahassee Thursday, Friday, Gainesville Saturday, Sunday, or vice versa. They just changed it every year. It was the best. Yeah, I I don't know. Um, and we also – I don't, Jeff. I'm sorry. Man, there's been a lot of mileage between then Listen, and now. Listen, I put you on the watch. spot. You were long gone. That's not your fault. I just – it's always bothered me, and I've just blamed it on Florida, frankly, but I I, I don't know. Well, I, I'll tell you, the Jacksonville game. Yeah. Well, look at last night. That was incredible. I, whether we're, whether it's right or wrong, I, I don't, I don't right. know. But last night, to have that kind of setting on a Tuesday night here – it's true. You're right. And it, the same thing in Gainesville. And Jacksonville was the same thing. And and playing that game in Jacksonville does bring some revenue into both programs. And the Jacksonville community rallies around it, and they provide a great experience for our guys. So it's neat. They're tough. They're tough midweek games. Like, there's no breathing room. When you throw those three in the middle of the week, Yeah, it's tough on us. It's tough on them. You know, you look at us getting back from Clemson and having to go to Jacksonville and regroup, and they were at Missouri, I think, right? And mm -hmm. they roll in here. Then you pull the weekend series forward for TV. Like, this is tough. So I, I don't know what the right formula is. I just know the experience last night for the fans and for this on national TV to be broadcast and people to watch this and the laser light show and the Marching Chiefs. Whatever day of the week it happened, yeah. That was on point. Last no, time. it was it was incredible, and I don't want to take away from what that was. You're right to point that out. I just always wondered because it would seem it would, it would you know down the line we'll talk about it another day because that was incredible. I do know this weekend, no lighter, no Whitaker. You want to give give us insight into that just for my listeners who didn't hear you last night. What's what's happening with that? Lighter is on his way back, and Whitaker did not rebound at all. So we're doing some testing to figure out what the next step is for him. I hope we get lighter back soon. I don't know where we're going to stand with Whitaker. We need Jamie to be the best Jamie he can be. Lauk is going to be a dynamic lefty for us, and we saw Dorsey mm -hmm. handle his start really well. The neat thing, Jeff, is we do have some pieces in the bullpen. Even though we're starting three lefties, we do have with Oxford and Army and Holtz, uh, you do have some left-handed options remaining in the bullpen. And, you know, we, we have some righties on the other side of it. So, lighters on the way back. Ben Barrett is trending back. I know it's been a while for him, but all of a sudden that guy's going to be lurking back out there, and that's a positive, and lighter's going to be okay, and we'll figure wit out. Uh, the Yankees are going through it. The Braves are going through it. You know, I know they have a farm system to adjust their roster. We don't. That's why pitching depth. Of all the things we're doing with our recruiting right now as we speak, at, this is happening right now. Accumulating pitching depth is probably the most important piece of the whole equation for us. I love to hear it, Coach. Thanks for the insight, and thanks for the time on a, such a busy day. Go do your work. Appreciate you. We'll talk again down the road and reflect on the season. Pulling for the Pirates for you, Jeff. I, I you, like man. that. I appreciate that, Coach. Right. Good. Take care. Bye.